I feel like everybody's right and everybody's wrong. 100%. Why is this important? Why are we even going here? He's helped a lot of guys. He's also not had success with a lot of guys. Come in with a purpose, and they're very intentional with what they do and how they do it. From the majors to the sandlot, baseball and softball share space in one place. Welcome to the farm system. Fellas, 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 and the ladies, welcome back to another episode of the Farm. We got Farm. We got an ex special guest today. Yes, Paige, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell the people, you know, where you play, all the things you do. I know you've been on the pod before, but you know, just in case mm -hmm. they, haven't, they haven't met you. Yep, I'm Paige Sinecki. I'm a junior at the University of Oregon. I'm a middle infielder, mostly shortstop. Um, mostly shortstop. Most, yeah, literally mostly every rep. She's probably, probably just <laughs> shortstop. Um, been a starter there for two years. Hopefully this year too. Probably, yeah. but um, yeah. yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> She's their their superstar shortstop. Don't let her be humble for you. Um, <laughs> I'm surprised she didn't throw up the O. Just to, you know, let it happen. The <laughs> the um, well, some of the things. One of the pieces with us. We last time we had you on the podcast, we had Elena here. And you guys got to talk um, and kind of go over and just different stages in your guys' career, too. And then also now, you, you know, again, you in the upper class um, level now where you gotten to go through some um, just growth and like learning. I remember my freshman and sophomore year, uh, it was like I'm still trying to like I guess I'm still trying to figure out who I am. Right. I'm always like all those things as well. But I think also, too, as well, like you learn to navigate like I know. Um, even on your team, uh, your coaches lean on you quite a bit for just like helping some of the underclassmen and some of the things that they go through. Um, what would you say? I was just like right off the jump. I was kind of just thinking about there as well. Like, what do you what do you think now? Just like as an upperclassman, like how do you how do you feel like the um, you know just freshmen and things like coming in or even like recruits and stuff? Like, what are the some of the questions? Like some of the common questions that they're they're asking you. Yeah, I mean, when you come in as a freshman, like, you kind of just want to, like, listen to everybody and just try to, like, fill your place out. Um, but as a junior, I think one of, like, the important things for me was to really get to know, like, every single freshman and, like, grow a relationship with them that's, like, more of a deeper one versus just surface level. And I yeah. think that, like, helped me be able to play better with them on the field and know kind of how to talk to them. And as a leader, I mean, obviously, I was, like, a leader as a freshman, but it's a different kind of leadership role because they're, like, going to you for, like, every question. Mm -hmm. Even, like, whether it's, like, what weight uniform are we wearing, like, on this morning? Like, for it's, sure. like, the simplest questions, but then it's also, like, hey, like, I don't understand, like, how to do this certain drill. Like, what, what makes you successful in this drill or what makes you successful in this life situation that helps you? So I think just knowing, like, how to talk to each individual and each freshman, like, helps me lead them in the right direction. I feel as a freshman, like Ali Bunker was that person for me. Yeah, and yeah. so I kind of, um, I took a lot of the information and the leadership roles that she provided for me. And I'm trying to do the same thing for the freshmen and sophomores that come to me, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think the, <clears throat> it's been cool just watching like for you as well. Like, again, we had you come in, what it was your freshman summer right? Yes. We're going into your sophomore year, mm -hmm. right? It was your first time that you were here. And also too, obviously like that girl compared to like now, even yeah. too, like, <laughs> you know, especially like being halfway through your junior year. I know that's a scary thing for you to think about. <laughs> it's like, it it already, made me sad. I was already sad about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, also I think there's, um, there's one of those things I, I, I've been interested in like just watching because now I've, I've gotten to train so many players that have gone through, like literally I've had players from, I've had kids that I've had when, since they were 10 years old, like all the way up, graduate through uh, college now, which I don't know, I feel, makes me feel old. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I remember I was also, I was coaching, you know, when I was in college, like I was, uh, even in, when I was in high school, I was coaching like club ball teams. I know you've gotten to help. Uh, your dad has a, is this his team or what? what He's like assistant coach. They actually um, won um, their like region the other oh, day. Cool. He just showed me their state oh, okay. little ring or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I was like, where's mine? I coached for a little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, you're like, hey. No. Practice. Yeah, he coaches that 12U team. So That's it was cool. Being That's good. <laughs> yeah, no. And so um, I know you shared, you shared that with me too. Um, one of the things that I wanted uh, to touch on too, speaking before we run past that, because there's that experience. You you talked about like when you 
got to go and coach like with your dad, how it gave you some perspective again to like when it came to like softball and just like mm. remembering being like a little girl and like, you know, from that side, kind of, would you mind sharing that? I'm, yeah. It was powerful for me when like you just yeah. like, shared. I mean, even that experience, but even I think back like during fall when things were getting hard this past junior year, um, like this little girl, she was our bat girl. She was 12 also. Wow. And she came and she looked just like me when I was 12 and I don't know what it was, but in that moment, like seeing her just with the softball uniform on because we like all dress them up for um, the games and stuff. And yeah, then yeah. she just had like the cutest little smile and she was just so happy to just be on the field and just around the girls. And you could just tell the way she talked about softball. It wasn't like, oh my God, like I have to worry about this, this and this. Like she was just happy to like be on the field and just like yeah. experience that moment. And I think even with the 12 year olds with my dad, like they're not worried about all these big important things that we all think is important, just like stats yeah. and just like how we play. Like they're just happy that they can be with their teammates and just experiencing the moment of just playing softball and like not feeling the pressures. And it kind of just put me back in a perspective of like, that's kind of why I play is just to love the game and love being with my teammates. And yeah, like winning's fun and all the stuff that comes with it. But just like knowing that they, that's like not their worries at that age. And that was never my worries either when I was that um old but when you get to college sometimes you just put this like all this pressure on you to like perform at the best level but that's like when you start to get in your head a lot and so I think being around 12 year olds and being around people who are just like playing the game and learning how to do it all like again is just like refreshing it's just a kind of a fresh of breath air that just um kind of gave me a little bit like revival I don't know if that's the right word but it just was like yeah. sweet to see because at the end of the day like We've been playing this game forever. Like I've been playing since I was four. Yeah, and yeah. I think like a lot of us, we forget kind of why we play. And I think that was a big thing that our team last year kind of looked into for culture. And that was like huge for us. Like, hey, why do you play the game? And then like knowing like each teammate's reason for their why. Some of it was for their like dad or like even just like smaller things that was more important for them. It was cool to see like each person's individual why because yeah. And you put all that together and like you play for everybody's wise. That's like bigger than anything else, like skills wise. And I think that's why it like helped us kind of go on our run last year. Yeah, no, that's <clears> good. <throat> yeah. And I, I remember too, you also um, had the opportunity uh, with Oregon this last year where you guys got to get, got to go. I, I, I know, I, I don't remember exactly. I want you to kind of tell the story too. It's like, um, I know that everybody doesn't get to go um, again. They like they pick athletes and those things as well. But I know that that was a big trip for you that gave you a lot of perspective as well um i wanted you to share oh the that. costa rica yeah the costa rica yeah so mm -hmm. university of oregon they take around i think it's 20 athletes mm. from all sports and they do a trip it's called courts for kids um every year and they pick a different place um every year so last year was costa rica for us um, me and my teammate remington we decided to sign up for it it was just like gonna be right after season and I was like, dude, I think this is going to be an awesome opportunity for us to just kind of clear our minds after such like a grinding long six months of just going after it. And yeah. so we um, got accepted and we went to Costa Rica like as like a week after season got done. Um, and we went there for 10 days and we actually built a basketball court. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Took like three, three, three to four days and we just got to hang out with the community. And these were um, it wasn't the greatest, most um like nicest community at all but just seeing like how happy everybody was and just how in the moment every single person in that community was was like honestly super eye-opening because mm -hmm. um even we didn't even have our phones for 10 days which honestly yeah. I recommend for anybody because <laughs> 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 a little detox didn't have any social media didn't know what was going on like anything in the world but mm -hmm. I just knew I was like living each moment um to the fullest and it was just awesome to see these kids just have so much joy and they didn't have like all the things that many of us have here back in the States, but like, it was just cool to see them enjoying the moment and enjoying like the presence of each other. And then yeah. just being able to build a basketball court and provide like more sports for them and a place mm -hmm. for them to get their mind off things was super cool. Yeah. And then like the last day we all got to uh, do a little clinic. We taught them how to do sp some sports like volleyball, basketball. Mm -hmm. um, I also played catch with a couple of the younger girls and that was just like another eye-opening thing that just puts me back in perspective. Um, they always kind of go by the saying Pura Vida mm -hmm. and it just means pure life and just kind of, oh. every time I think back to that trip, it just puts me like to back where my feet are and just like be present mm -hmm. because it's so easy to like get off track when yeah. you're 
just going, going, going instead of just being invested in the time that like you're in right now. And I think um, it was just a cool experience that I wish everybody could experience once in their life. It, yeah. It really changed like my perspective on everything. Yeah. No, I remember I remember us talking just like through it as well as like, you know, you were sharing with me, too. It's just like like they don't have the greatest like living conditions and mm -hmm. all these things. And like, you know, you we get stuck obviously like we get in our everyday environment and our perspective of just like getting warped by the world of like more and greater and I can do better. And like this, you know, um, constant like chase as well, but also too, a lot of times I know that me personally too, like I can lose sight, um, of the precious present. That's also a really good mm -hmm. book by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, yeah, the same thing too is like, I think with that is like when you were sharing that with me too, and I could just tell it just like in your, your heart, like when you came back, like, just had so much more peace and like mm -hmm. uh just more perspective and things like that as well and i think that that's the other thing is i was i was thinking about that too as well as like my journey when i went through college as well is i just remember like as a freshman like you said or as a sophomore and even too now that i'm outside obviously i've been outside of college now for a little bit is um also all these things i stressed about when i was in you know um college and also earlier years of my life that just didn't matter in the macro and you know a lot of times you know when me and you're talking i'm like hey like <laughs> like you know don't over like yes these yeah. things are important but compared to what like mm -hmm. you know how important actually are they like it doesn't mean that they don't matter like everything matters but at the same time um how important are they in the macro of like you know where you're going in your life or you know these other stages where it's like you'll even forget 99% of these things even happened or mm -hmm. you'll be like, Oh yeah, like that. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I remember that happened at <laughs> that one point or like, it just feels like such a blimp in time. Yeah. Um, and one of the things, uh, it was actually super interesting. Um, Cody was sh shared this with me, I think yesterday, Cody was talking about how, um, one of his pastors was talking about how, like, if you look at like a dog's life, like they don't live very long. Right. So when you, um, leave, right and you come back to them that seems like a really long period of time mm -hmm. because if you were only living for you know let's say 15 years or something like that right like a day is a different significance mm -hmm. right like than it is for like us what a day would be and then from like uh then he tied it back in where the pastor was saying like from a biblical perspective like what is a day or a year or 10 years like to god Mm -hmm. Right. It's like someone that's outside of time yeah. and sees life from a different perspective. Yeah. And like the same thing, it's like to a dog, like you're gone for 30 minutes. It's like, it's a big deal. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're gone. I remember I'd be gone all day. Like with my dog, it's come back home. He's like, you know, <laughs> so juiced. <laughs> but you think about that, right. It's like the same thing too, as well. It's like, we lose that perspective because every single day, um, we're chasing after like these things and we get involved in our world. And like us as humans, we love to like, fill up our schedule and like we're always busy doing something but at the same time like you know again if what we're prioritizing and like how we easily can lose perspective I think that's why it's been one of my favorite things that I got to watch uh, with you is also uh, your walk with God um, and also to how much uh, closer you've gotten to God uh, over the last couple of years and I think you know with that as well I mean that is probably 90% of our combos yeah, <laughs> Seriously. Um, yeah and so I, I think that's you know, been big there as well. I've even too, I, uh, I think it's also been really cool just seeing you too as well. Like you've done uh, like your post game interviews and things like that too. And, and like you know, times where you've mentioned like how you've leaned on your faith and like things in those moments. And mm -hmm. um, what do you feel like that for you? Um, what, what do you think that like that relationship have you been building that like kind of with God? What is that? How has that helped you or like what has that done for you? And yeah, you'd be able to lean that way. I mean, it's helped me in all aspects of life, not just softball, because at the end of the day, like, yeah, softball is important. But I think over the past few years, especially like with you as a mentor, like mm -hmm. God's my everything. And God, like, that's who I'm like, he's my best friend and I can go to him at any point in time. And I think actually a couple of weeks ago when I was back for Thanksgiving break, like the when we went to church, it was just the gratitude part. I think yeah. that has really um, changed my perspective a lot lately. And I've also been able to share that with a couple of my teammates that also been, have been struggling with that. Yeah. Um, but just being able to wake up every day and just thanking God for everything that he gives me, like even mm -hmm. just like the simplest things, that's just like, it's just life changing in a way that I know I can go to him at any point. And mm -hmm. it just 
brings me joy and peace because there's times where I do and I like I'm just very competitive and I want more and more and more and that's like what all of us want but at the end of the day like that's not what really God wants for us like he just Mm -hmm. wants us to um be able to like find the love from just doing things that um gosh I can't even put the words because it's just so cool but (laughs) no it's just like different like I just have seen like it changed my life because things will get super stressful and there was times like before my faith where I didn't know what to like go to and it would just like keep adding up but like I can just be able to go and have conversations with him and it puts me at peace and just joy and it calms me and it puts me in a better perspective of how to go about my days instead of just Mm -hmm. being like letting the weight of things carry down on me because that was always the hardest thing and just like learning more and like having you as that mentor has really helped me with like my walk in faith too Mm -hmm. just because I can just grow so much and learn from you because it is it was kind of new for me and it Mm -hmm. still is like I'm still learning and trying to (laughs) there's so much to like no knowledge from him like it's just as crazy how much endless it's endless and like his love is endless for us and just having that love from him at every moment of the day and it's just as cool like even like there's times like even this fall where i just like was so stressed about school and softball and like i maybe was like not as focused on it and it was like he was still there no matter what and i was like for sure I don't know. Just those conversations are just the best thing for me. Yeah. No. I don't even like. It's hard to put into words how how much he's in, like he's changed my life because he really has. And um, yeah, I, I have no words for that part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's I mean that's a hard thing too. Is like again like because our relationship with God is so not like any other relationship in your entire life. Like we have glimpses of it in other relationships mm-hmm. for sure, but. Um, the same thing as well. It's like, how can you, how can a creation define its creator? You know, it's like, we only have, um, we even, uh, again, it was uh, how me and Cody got to that conversation the other day was I was sharing with him one thing that our pastor talked about this last weekend where he was talking about where he had to go and get, um, his dog spayed. Right. And, and, uh, when the dog came home and had the cone of shame on and all the things <laughs> like his dog didn't want anything to do with him, like wouldn't spend time with him, wanted to spend time with the rest of the family because he was kind of mad, mm-hmm. you know, and Cody actually shared the same thing that the tank here is that when tank got neutered, um, his mom had to take him in. Mm-hmm. And when he came home, he wouldn't go next to her. <laughs> and he was like kind of upset with her. And he was given the example of, um, he had no way the dog doesn't have a consciousness the available for us to be able to explain like, Hey, this is actually a really good thing for you. Like I'm Mm -hmm. taking care of you. I'm actually loving you. And like, you know, making sure that like, you know, we're protecting you and all these other things and all the benefits of doing, uh, doing that. But at the same time from their consciousness, it's like, they just feel pain, hurt, like (laughs) abandonment, all Mm -hmm. these other things. Right. And then he, he brought that back in of our level of consciousness compared to, you know, like God's right. Like, there's things that we go through and there's you know, things that we're navigating through that God can't explain to us, right? Just because our conscious level, it's like, again, the same thing, like me trying to explain to, you know, my dog, it's like, hey, like <laughs> we're doing this, but like this is actually for you, you know, like mm-hmm. I'm not punishing you. Like, again, I'm not, I'm not giving you table food or whatever, right? Because like I do love you and I want you to live as long as possible. And like, you know, for example, like your breed doesn't live very long and like they have heart problems or they have, you know, all these issues. And so because of that, like I can't give you this food or I can't give you these other things. And um, I think about that like as well as like I was reading through, um, I read through uh, Job yesterday because I was telling you I watched Mm. watched that movie The Shift. If you haven't seen The Shift, go watch The Shift. (laughs) Uh, It's a story like kind of a modern day um, look at like the life of Job. And, um, one of the things I was, as I was reading through, uh, Job, some of the responses, I, I, it's funny now when I was reading through Job, it's almost like he's in a group chat with all his boys (laughs) and, and his boys are like responding back to him, like, like kind of trying to, kind of trying to check him and like get his perspective back. But at the same time, uh, they, you know, they had their own shortcomings which we all do. We all fall short, but like the, um, one of the things that one of his friends said back to him is like, you know, what benefit does God get from you not sinning? Right. And it's like when basically the point he was making is like, God doesn't need anything from you. 
Like he, he wants everything for you and he loves you and he's going to take care of you and all these other things. But at the same time, like he doesn't benefit from you not sinning. Like he doesn't benefit from you following the rules. He doesn't benefit, um, like God doesn't benefit in any way from us. Like we benefit and always from him. Mm -hmm. And so like, because of that relationship and like, that's so unlike any other relationship in our life where it's like, yeah, like you do these things and like, man, you show up for me and I show up for you in these ways and like all of that. And all the only, there's very few relationships in our life that we can almost like bring back over. I almost think about it. Like, um, a lot of times like parents with kids, right. It's like your kid doesn't even understand all the things that you're doing for them. Like Mm -hmm. you're, you know, like you're, they don't, they can't comprehend all the things that you have to do on a daily basis, like just to provide for them, provide shelter, you know, love for them. Like, and also to like raising, I was, me and Jarrell talked about this other day. I'm like, you're literally teaching a little human how to be a human. <laughs> like <laughs> the, the weight of that, right. Yeah. Of like trying to teach someone how to be a human is, mm-hmm. and also like, you know, you can teach kids to do anything. You can teach them to hate. You can teach them to be addicts. You can teach them to, um, you know, <laughs> not love people. You can teach them to not have gratitude. You can teach them all of these bad things, just like as a coach, right? Like you can teach people to do a lot of really bad things, right? Or, you know, mm-hmm. you can go the other way. And I think, um, you know, with that, it's like a sp- perspective, like shift for us there on the same side of that is like from a relationship standpoint is like, like you're saying is, I can always run to you because like, you're always going to be patient with me. Like you're always going to be kind to me. Like you've been, there's that one song that's like, I think it's called kind. Right. But it's like, you, you, you've been nothing but kind to me. Even when I was your enemy, even when I went against you, Mm -hmm. even when I fell short, even when I blamed you, even when, you know, I'm hurt. Like Job is like hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. God, God allowed the enemy to take his whole life from him. Right. Like, and, and, um, he had, I was just reading through and was just imagining like, you know, he had like, blisters on his skin and like his he's like he said that his his wife was repelled by him because of how bad his breath was Mm -hmm. and like some of these things that he was dealing with from a health standpoint from a financial standpoint like all of these things like the like everything is against me like Mm -hmm. and this was this is basically if you don't know the story of job is uh, the enemy goes to god and and god says the enemy's like i've looked you know i've been traveling all over the world because god's like where have you been and the enemy's like well i've been traveling all over the world seeing all the brokenness and wickedness like within the world and how all of your like all of our people are broken right Mm -hmm. and then god's like draws attention to job and he's like well have you seen job like (laughs) job's my Mm -hmm. you know like job is a righteous man like all these other things and then the enemy says well um if he's, you know, he's only like that because you bless him so much. Mm -hmm. And if you, he didn't have those blessings, like he wouldn't, he wouldn't lean on you. Um, and he wouldn't uh, honor you in that way. And then God's like, okay, well go test him. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, so he he goes and tests them, takes these things away. And then like Job still gives honor to God. So then he goes and then he comes back to God and he's like, God's like, where have you been? Mm -hmm. He's like, well, I've been looking around the world, all these other things, all the brokenness. And he's like, how about Job? Like you took all these things from him and he still honors me. And then he, um, and then uh, um, uh, God, and then he tells God, well, that's because he still has his health. If you allowed me to take his health as well, like, mm-hmm. you know, he wouldn't honor you this way. So he goes and takes those things. And then Job is angry with God, right? Mm-hmm. He is, he's, he's praying, mm-hmm. right? Which is the main point of this, right? Too, even in all of his losses, even in all of his misery, even in all of his anger, like he continues to reach out to God and and talk to him about his anger and his suffering. And like, why has he turned his face from him? And he's like, God, tell me where I've sinned. Tell me where I can, I can turn. Because at the time, everyone viewed, um, everyone viewed suffering as linked to a result of sin. Mm-hmm. Right. So it being like, you're only suffering like this. And this was like the downfall of like uh, Job's friends mm-hmm. is they were telling him uh, they were telling him that the reason that he was going through all the suffering is because he did wrong. Mm-hmm. Right. And and Job's like, dude, like mm-hmm. I didn't I've done nothing but honored God, you know, my whole life. I like, mm-hmm. you know, all these other things. And so he was crying out to God of like telling me, like, tell me where I've fallen short. Tell me where I've misstepped. And like, I will turn I will about face. I will, I'll repent. Mm-hmm. And um, I think you know, a thing like that too, as well. It's like a different perspective is I think you, the reason I brought that up was when you said too, as well, it's like that understanding of like God's your best friend, you know? And like, just like you can go to your best friend when you're just like, I can run to Tay or I can run to Jarrell and, um, when I've fallen short or I've had a really bad day or 
when I'm excited, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm excited about something, something happened and I want to call them and, you know, I want to be like, oh man, all these other things. Or when I'm texting you, I'm like, oh, I, like I'm working with this pro guy right now. Or like, mm -hmm. and I'm like so excited about like certain things. Right. And it's like, I can, I can go to him, um, in all of those areas of my excitement and mm -hmm. anger, you know, like Anytime. God's not upset with my anger. And, um, you know, or again, like I could have a really bad day and, mm -hmm. you know, got Paris on the field <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, like all these things. And, and, um, I didn't have that when I was playing. So I kind of envious in that way, uh, mm -hmm. like you as well. And that way is like, I didn't have a relationship with God when I was playing. Yeah. Um, and, or at least not a healthy one. And, um, I think on the, the same side of that too, as well is I've seen the ways that he's worked in your heart and just like the, I would call it like, like filling you back up, like your spirit mm -hmm. and like how you can continue to, you know, uh, operate from there rather than yeah. like a place of like shame or like not enough or yeah. I didn't do enough or, um, someone told me like the other day, I forgot when it was, but they were just talking about how like friendships, like they kind of come and go. Like there's people that come in your life and then they were like saying people always leave though. And I was just like, Man. God doesn't leave. God don't <laughs> and it work. was just like, yeah. I don't know, like that just gave me joy just knowing like, cause it's true. Like there'll be times where you'll have a friend and they're not like gone forever, but like maybe you don't talk to them as much, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. like God, God will never leave me. Yeah. And he's always there. So it was just kind of, it was just kind of like a, I don't know what the word is, but she was like, oh no, like people always leave, people always leave. And I was like, no. Yeah. Trauma. Not always. <laughs> Tra trauma. <laughs> I was like, yeah. no, but God, God won't. So it's just. Yeah. And I think that's a big thing too as well. One thing that I have really loved, like also, I think one reason, in my opinion, like why you've grown so quickly in your relationship with God, I think in a lot of ways too, just in other areas of your life, um, you're pretty healthy in the sense of like just relationships like you were already like in the same thing, like very trusting and kind and like a lot of these other areas too. But I think one of the areas that was so tough for me and still is like all the time is, you know, I got to, I, um, like my pride, you know, it was like the same thing. It's like me having to like submit to God and, um, <laughs> like, uh, and I think a lot of it, like we talked about this, me and Drew, talked about this on the last podcast that, that, I just had built up a lot of like self-reliance when I was growing up. Like it was, mm -hmm. I felt like it was on me. Like mm -hmm. it was on me, like my performance, like my, and I think that's why I had so much anxiety on the field was if I built up all of this where it's like, it's on me, like hashtag self-made, like all these things. <laughs> right. But the problem with that, but the problem with that is like this self, this big self-reliance, you know, piece with that as well. It's like, well, my failures were also mine alone right and like there was nobody else and it was you know again i i took it as like a big identity you know thing if i went over four like my whole world was crushed mm -hmm. you know if i i was mad the whole you know until my next game and then if i went <laughs> had a terrible game again or if i had a bad week um you know like it really really weighed heavy on me and um you know, again, my whole identity was in my performance and like, that's still like a big thing for me as well. So I talk to God about that a lot, just in the sense of, um, I think why, why you've also grown so much quicker than I, I, I think my walk with God was as well is like still to this day that like, there's all these times where I have this pride built up where it's like, you know, it's like, um, I I'll ask him cause even in uh, certain disciples at certain points I had asked him like, God, like, help me with my like lack of belief, like help me with my hardened, you know, pieces of my heart, help me with my pride, help me with my trust issues that I have with you. It's like, I haven't been able to lean on, you know, somebody like you or somebody like that. And I think again, like relationships like that, like again, like even my relationship with Jerome Taylor in those same ways is like, they help soften my heart where like, I know that like I have other relationships where I can actually lean on people and, um, you know, and again in, and not be, you know, afraid of, um, because I, I, I've said that with, you know, you specifically, again, we have a very unique relationship compared to a lot of athletes like that I've had to mm -hmm. is like on the same, the same way, way with that is um, me, me being able to be like open, transparent, all these other things, which I'm very authentic with a lot of our players too. But I think the uh, space of that, of like one thing I look for big in like relationships or friendships and like all those things as well is there's like a commitment that's made to each other. It's like, Hey, like 
even in your ugliness, right? Like, and that's our, my relationship with God is like, even in my ugliest, darkest Mm -hmm. fall, like there's nothing again, if you read through the Bible and you look at all the ways that everybody fell short or, you know, all the things that, uh, that you could do, it's like, again, like even when God was my enemy, like he was still there. The moment that I was ready to turn and like walk with him, like, mm-hmm. he was there with grace, understanding, mercy, love for me, um, all those things. And there's nothing I could do that like would ever escape him, like yeah. wanting, you know, wanting to have a relationship with me, mm-hmm. you know? But I think the, um, what do, what do you think like for you, what do you think that like what helped you so much? Cause I admire that part about you is that, that, that piece is you were very open to following you know, and I, when it, when it comes to him and I know that you have, mm-hmm. it's just your relationship with God. So you're like, but I have contrast of like so many people that I've like helped lead the Christ or like their relationship. And like one thing mm-hmm. uniquely about you is like, I'd say that is like you had, you were like, yeah, like mm-hmm. yeah, I'll follow our, you know, like I have no problem reading my Bible. Like I have yeah. no problem doing these other things where like other people, there's some like resistance there. Like, what do you think that that was kind of, for I you? think for me personally, I saw how he worked through like important people in my life like obviously like I see how he works through you but like even coachless yeah. on our softball team like I was just all of a sudden like surrounded even coach martyr like there was just yeah. so many like important people in my life that were um just kind of like guiding me and leading me through my faith and it was kind of just like easy to just start going all in for it because I know the type of people they are and like mm. I like to surround myself with people that I love and care about and see good qualities in. And like, I don't know, I just like surrounding myself by those type of people just because why be around people that are just going to complain and be (laughs) negative and stuff like that. But I just could see like how, um, like hearing their testimonies and just hearing how he's been able to work through them Mm. and you, it was just easy to be like, I'm like all in, like, I just want to learn more about you and grow with you. And I, like, wish I would have had, like, a relationship with that, like, way earlier in my life. But it's, like, never too late, obviously. For sure. And um, just even, like, the community we have at University of Oregon with FCA and then becoming a SALT leader. It was just, like... Yeah, who's your guys' FCA leader or really like him? Is he still there? His name's Tony. Tony. I can't think of his last name right now. <laughs> yeah, that's but um, yeah. I don't know. It was just, like, everything was just, like, leaning me towards it. And I was just, yeah. like... Even just like doing like one little Bible study with you, I just felt like joy and I felt like relief and I just felt like I had been not reflecting as much with God or just like in general, Mm -hmm. like it was just, there were some things that I could reflect on in my life and like through God and I just, yeah, um, being able to have that, it was just something that pulled me in and like the joy that I was like feeling was like no like I didn't feel that from anything else yeah. so like it was just Unique. like it was just kind of like why wouldn't I like there was nothing yeah. for me not to yeah and so that's kind of I'd say that and like people like important people in my life like you obviously and mm. my two coaches that like kind of brought it up to me yeah, yeah. earlier in my sophomore year I was like like why why not listen to them when they yeah. when they are like true children of God and like their love be. huh we try to be All yeah I, I also think everybody you just listed is again great examples like you said though yeah um you know lists you know for sure you know me and sam talk about you know god all the time too as well and like their walks and um how much they love god is over abundant as well and like, mm-hmm. they've affected me as well um so again i i agree in that same way like god definitely not only like preparing you for like relationships you had earlier in your life. Cause that was one thing it was for me was, you know, I had some tough relationships early in my life and some of them were really close to me, you know, family, mm-hmm. friends, things like that. Right. That built up some of that like resentment or I let built up some of that resentment in me or maybe, um, distrust. Right. So, you know, a lot of times we bring those relationships into our relationship with God and there can be that resistance when you start to have a real, you know, it's like you bring your baggage with you and you're, <laughs> my traumas and God was like I can deal with your traumas like oh, I can deal with your traumas like I, I don't mind your anger I don't mind you know I don't mind your questions that was a big one for me I like um I also built up a lot I was telling uh Darrell this as well it's like in I think it's first Corinthians mm, maybe it's second Corinthians but uh he talks about like he goes uh there's like this 
this, uh, it goes on this tangent kind of talking about, um, how God will like dismantle, like even our, like our, our smartest human, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just like <clears throat> nothing compared to God's wisdom and like how he loves to, you know, we get all this wise counsel and like all this earthly wisdom and mm -hmm. how like God's wisdom is like, he'll tell you to go left when everybody's telling you to go right. Yeah. And, you know, again, cause he's the creator of the world. Like he knows, you know, what's going on in the mm -hmm. other, other place. And like, but again, like along with that, like us having the wisdom and the trust and the faith to also like walk that way and do those things. And I, I, one of the things, um, you know, it's important. Me and Taylor talk a lot about this too, but not only in friendships, but in any relationship and obviously God being the highest relationship part of that, right. Is like feeling safe to be able to unpack what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm really feeling. And like, even in those scen scenarios, right. Like you go like, Oh, okay. Like I'm the Oregon shortstop. Right. Like, um, you know, you could, it, and the, sometimes you can get, you can be put in these positions where it's like, it's not okay for me to feel these ways, right? Mm -hmm. I should be grateful. Well, what if I'm not feeling that way? Mm -hmm. Like, I should be happy. Well, what if I'm not happy? Yeah. Like, I should, I should, um, I should feel like I'm one. I should be very secure and feel like I'm the one of the best players in the world. But like, what if I don't feel that way? Mm -hmm. You know, and like today, I don't. Like, I, I went. You know, the last two weeks, I have had a hard time. I got two hits in the last two weeks, and now what, mm -hmm. you know, and like, I don't feel that way, even though other people see me that way, like in my heart, I don't feel that way. And then also I could feel like if I go to try to talk to somebody about that, I'm immediately like, it's like, well, you should just be so privileged because you do whatever, <laughs> right. Where it's just like, that's just not true. Right. Like, and I, I think like having that safety and that, was the, that relationship obviously with God, that, that gave me, he gave me the security and safety to actually process some of these things that like really hard conversations, um, with someone that I can be completely like there is like Taylor probably especially like the same thing like Taylor and Jarrell been with me for a really long time Taylor been with what are we over 15 now over 15 years yeah we over 15 <laughs> years Taylor knows almost about everything like mm -hmm. you know inside now but also too there's things that are I can't even explain to her that I even I've forgotten about that God did not mm -hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> and and like we have a different level of intimacy like me and God right is like he knows things about me. I don't even know about me, you know, mm -hmm. like he, he, he knitted me together in my, in my mother's womb. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, like he knows the hairs on my head. He knows, you know, he, he knows all of these things. And also too, like maybe even why I'm feeling this way when I don't understand why I feel that way. And so I think that that's also been a, you know, big part for me too, as well as like the freedom there to really unpack my ugly mm -hmm. and have a secure enough relationship where I can unpack my, my ugly my skeletons and I could just be like like God why am I hiding from you yeah when you know everything yeah what is there to hide mm -hmm. like I can't hide mm -hmm. from you like there's nowhere I could go yeah to hide. I can go to the depths of the ocean or to the sky or in my you know I can't hide it in the closet mm -hmm. because like you're in the closet like you you <laughs> see everything right like there's nothing you know that's why I think it's it's funny like when we read through like Genesis or something like that and they like hide from God and they're like oh but we're naked it's like <laughs> I created you <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what are you hiding from me? And yeah. also too, like, what are you hiding from? Like, you can't hide your heart from me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like God knows our thoughts. Like he knows our heart, right? He knows our things. So it's like, there's no reason in hiding from him. And like, that's where like that safety comes as well. It's like, I can't hide from him. And also too, like, why would I want to hide from you? Yeah. Like, you know, and I think that that gave me the safety to like actually heal and like heal in a lot of those places. It's like, you know, I might be scared to bring this up with somebody else. Right. And like, maybe they judge me and what they would think of me or, you know, this blah, 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 blah. Um, mm -hmm. and the deeper and, and, and more intimate relationships I have, I can be even more like that, but yeah. there's no relationship like your relationship with yeah. God, you know, when you, when you actually develop from that way and like, <clears throat> just know that like, man, like I can come to him with what might sound like the most outrageous mm -hmm. thing right now. Like, again, like, I, I think for the people you probably shared this too as well. Like some people start to think you, you guys aren't humans. Hmm. Like you don't have the same emotions. I get to like train with you guys and talk to you guys and all these things. I'm like, no, you have normal human things that yeah. you go through every day. But like a lot of people literally watch athletes on TV and like think you guys are like just yeah, superhuman and don't have emotions yeah. and like things aren't happening in your life. And you know, again, like that you guys don't go through breakups, that you guys don't go through things that like, you know, again, like you guys don't have fears or anxieties or depressions or all these other things like 
you're just a human like anybody else. Right. And it's like, yeah, you're highly skilled, athletic, all these other things. But like then the day, like you're dealing with some of these things too. And they have a lot to do with your guys' performance and like how you, how you play. So like, I think that that's a, a big thing as well as, you know, um, they, a lot of people forget that when they're watching you guys, yeah. you know, play on TV. One of our, um, football kickers, he, uh, he had like a tough season this year, but we were, I remember being at the game. I don't remember who it was against, but everybody was just chirping their mouth. Like, yeah. Oh, here he goes again. Missed another one. But I actually yeah. went on the Costa Rica trip with him. So I was, oh, like, wow. I was really like close with him, like yeah. knew, like just kind of how he is like obviously like he has emotions he yeah like he's super skilled but like it's just sometimes it's hard like seeing that stuff so it's just i like feel for, for those moments like that yeah because <laughs> hey, well and and like you said too like i've i a lot of times have sat in the stands right when my players are like mm -hmm. playing on the field right and fans are saying this or that mm -hmm. or whatever and you know you you get that other perspective as well as like they it's almost like fans too. A lot of times, will remove the humanity from that player. Like, there's no amount of money I could give somebody to make them not human. Yeah, like, that's just not how that works. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're getting paid for their skills and all these other things too. And like, again, you're playing at Oregon for a reason. Like, for sure. Like, um, but also too, and in, in large, like, fans also don't get to see like, just like you're saying as well. When you're on a trip and you're more personable, like with someone that's on the field, like, yeah, the lights are on and there's you know forty thousand mm -hmm. fans here or whatever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time. You know, the same thing, too, is, like, I get to see you guys, you know, train. Like, I get to see you guys, like, you know, and also, too, like, relationships. A lot of my players, same thing, like, a lot of times, like, I'm with you guys when you guys are crying or struggling or, mm -hmm. you know, like, pushing through these things and, like, the ups and downs and the excitement and the, you know, family hurts and, and mm -hmm. even, too, spiritual hurts and, like, you know, uh, when people pass away in your guys' lives or, like, you know, all these other things. And a lot of times, again, the same thing too with that is like when you celebritize or like idolize or put these people on like on this other pedestal, like again, when, for example, I mean, as you can remember, like you're growing up and you're watching these girls play at Oregon, right? And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, like you're the little girl, <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, looking at them and you're like, wow, like, yeah. you know, she's so amazing. All these other things. I'm like, meanwhile, like, yeah, yeah, that's just, she's a human. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. She's a highly skilled human that dedicated a lot of things yeah. and like is very good. But like at the same time, like at the end of the day, like you know, again, like you guys are training every single day to like do your best and, and, and do all those other things. And, um, you know, again, like sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you strike out. Yeah. Sometimes you make an error to, you know, blow your season. Sometimes mm -hmm. you make, you know, miss four kicks in a row or something, you know, like, so yeah. like sometimes like those things happen. And also too, it's not, I think it's a big thing too, as well. Like one thing I've seen you really do well with like how do you handle um because I, I love how you process this part like or i've seen you process it <laughs> is um how do you handle your relationship with god when things don't go your way or when um like again when you do you know not perform at the level that you would like to perform at like a lot of people have an issue with that like with with god too as well it's like how do you view that and those those mm -hmm. conversations that you have with god yeah uh, when things don't go your way I mean, I'm still learning, but I also think, Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, like God has a plan for me Yeah. and like sometimes like whatever my, I think my plan is, it's not going to always go right. And I'm going to be like, I could be upset about it, but I know God has a bigger plan at the end of the day. And if that's me not winning a national championship or being all American or whatever, like yeah. I've accepted that and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Or and, playing Team USA. Yeah. Or playing Team or USA. Getting LA's right or there. getting all it's like all <laughs> that. And it's it's hard. It's not easy just to be like to accept that. But once you do, it's just you do feel like a different kind of joy. And I think God will also like he'll purposely like have things maybe not go your way right now. But like maybe those things that aren't going your way, it's gonna like open up a different opportunity or path sure. that He really wants you to like really wants in like my plan so I kind of just yeah. like well like sometimes like I understand that part of it and I think just yeah. knowing that like trusting his plan even when things do get tough it's it's not easy but with the relationship I have with him and just being able to talk to him I'm like okay like you're right like this maybe this isn't like last year was tough like I had a hard time like a lot mm -hmm. and like obviously I hadn't been 
as strong in my faith i feel like as i am like now i think i took like a big leap over summer yeah um just being able to like be up in oregon by myself and yeah just taking those weeks to just like constantly be reading the bible and just i, I just feel like being closer with him has allowed me just to realize like i'm I want I want to do whatever plan like he has for me, and yeah. I think just that has put me at peace because mm. that's like what I want at the end of the day. Yeah. From him, so. How wise of you, Paige? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I I think that's the thing is like as well as you know, kind of that's why I actually pulled a lot more from. Uh, for a long time, I actually avoided reading Job because mm-hmm. it's really depressing. Mm-hmm. Why? You know, he's just like. The first part of Job, like, he's literally just, like, complaining to God for literally his friends calling him out. He's like, I sent it I sent it to both of them. It's like certain parts of it where I was like, make it, tell him. It's like, <laughs> he's complaining and his friends are like, how long do we have to hear you complain to God? Like, mm-hmm. you know, like he's in the group chat just, like, lighting it up. Just like, God is not doing this. He's not showing up in my life this way. <laughs> and blah, 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 blah. And he's just complaining and complaining yeah. and complaining and complaining. And he's, like, calling God out of his name, like, his, out of his sovereignty, which is where... He needs, he repents at the end of the book, um, as well, um, where he repents because again, he lost sight of God's sovereignty. Like he is in control. And like, again, like what honor does it bring to God? And also what benefit does it bring to God? He's not a human. It doesn't bring him benefit to see you suffer. Mm -hmm. If you're suffering, he's, there's a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's either going to bring you closer to him or it's going to remove an idol or something like maybe performance, right? Mm -hmm. Is an idol you have in your life where it's like, which is tied to like status, how people view me, Mm -hmm. what other people will think of me, things like that, right? Too as well. Or if I'm not that, like how I think of myself and it's like, I'm tied to my identity is how I view myself. And it's based off of my performance. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, that has to get realigned and like his real strength, your real strength will be you leaning on him and what he says about you. Right. And, um, I was just talking about this uh, the other day. I was just talking about this the other day with one of our other players where, you know, like how God views them and the same thing too. And, and our pastor was talking about this last week at church is like, again, like you're loved, you're chosen, like you're forgiven and like mm-hmm. what that actually means and why that's so important to have an alignment and not to, you know, we got to always keep in sight, like how God views us and like what our true identity is mm-hmm. um, instead of all these things that, 99% of it that I can't even control mm-hmm. and also remembering on the same side of that right like you're training you're doing all these other things but like the girl that was on the mound is also doing that mm. this is also her dream <laughs> yeah. this is also what she's sacrificed for her entire life she was the 12 year old girl that wanted to play for Stanford she was the 12 year old girl that <laughs> wanted to play you know again all these other things right or 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 the football player that wanted to block your kick or you know and run mm-hmm. it back and win the national championship like on the other side of the field too is another person that's just like you that, you know, sacrificed all these other things. Right. And, and at the end of the day, like we all have a different path and different gifts and all these other things. But also I've said this multiple times as well. And like, I actually got slack on it one, one time uh, on social media, I posted this and people were mad. <laughs> and I was like, at the end of my life, if all I'm known for is being a good hitting coach, like I've dramatically failed. Yeah. Right. And they were like, the people were like, what do you mean? Like, I would love to be known as a career <laughs> coach. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, again, on the end of the day, like God didn't put me here just so I could be a good hitting coach. Mm-hmm. Like, like, what does that have to do with anything? Like when I die, like, you know, 30 years from now, the same thing, like people will move on. They will yeah. discover new things. Why like I'm just, I'll just be, you know, again, there's scientists that were much longer before Einstein or all these other people. Like there's, there's physicists that have changed the world mm-hmm. that we don't know their names. Right. Like, can't recite any of them, right? I might know all of them. Yes, there I'm you go. Just kidding. Yeah, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. but yeah, you know, like again, along with that, right? It's just like, again, at the end of the day, like the world will keep moving, and that's not the purpose. Like it's not, um, and also another end of that is, uh, I think one of the, he said it the other day. I, I reposted in my story too, which I was driven a lot by this, which is, you know, driven by like. Gary V posted, right? Like you can be driven by like hate, resentment, almost like I've been watching Star Wars lately. I know you don't watch movies, Paige, um, but I've been watching, <laughs> I've been watching Star Wars lately and they talk about like, obviously, I don't know if you knew this, but probably not. Uh, Star Wars was actually largely based off of Christianity oh. and like the, the you know, maker was like, yeah, so they talk about the force, which is the Holy Spirit and God, right? And so you can go the dark way of the force, right? Which is like hatred 
you know, like embracing your hate for others and like mm -hmm. how it can be motivating for you. And it could be like, I'm going to prove them wrong. I'm going to do all these other things. And they yeah. said, what I'm going to, and right. And like that being a powerful force, yeah. right. It is a powerful force and motivation and all these other things, but also too, like what it comes with it. Mm -hmm. And also too, you know, the other side where like Yoda is talking about like, you know, like how fear leads to hate. And like hate leads to like all of these things that will like again, or you can be basically you can be motivated by, you know, gratitude and love mm. and, um, you know, uh, uh, fellowship and like all these other things and like loving people. Right. And like how that can be a motivator like too as well. And it's I, I think I had a hard time because I lived more of my life embracing, you know, it was a, it was a good fuel source for me. Right. Mm. It was like I played good when I was mad and pissed off and I wanted like. I wanted to destroy everybody's dreams on the field. It was like, I was the dream killer. Like mm -hmm. that was like, in my head it was like, you know, like, no, I know that that's your dream, but like, I'm taking your dream. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is like my dreams coming true. Like yeah. I want my, my, me, 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 me. Yeah. Right. And like, that was like my, like I embraced the villain, you mm -hmm. know, when I played, when I, when a lot, when I played and not till like late in my career, the last couple of years, um, in college. And then, Obviously, as I got perspective, like going out, you know, as well, like even in my life of switching that as well as like what was actually fueling me compared to, you know, these other things that were driving me mm -hmm. that were left some nasty byproducts like in my heart. Yeah. Um, I think the, um, you know, again, the the piece that I've loved, you know, with you, like in that same space as well as like you've been like. As as you've noticed like you kind of mentioned earlier like yeah there's times in my life where i'm really yep. talking with god and i'm like so like we're you know i'm reading a ton i'm in my bible a lot i'm i'm don't miss a bible study and i'm at church and all these other things but it's, it's not like a checklist thing it's just like i have more time or i have mm -hmm. other things or i'm prioritizing it better or i'm really leaning on him right now and then there's times where you know again i get busy and like i'm not as consistent and i'm not all those other things and um again the whole time like he's sitting there just like waiting for me to mm -hmm. turn my face back <laughs> and um uh, um what has that been like for you in the same sense of like what would you say like earlier in your walk with god compared to like you said like now and i know that like again along with that like i'm gonna say i'm still early in my faith too as well i i got many more years right god many more years <laughs> right that we like i just think about like when i'm 80 years old yeah my relationship with god will be you know what that will look like comparatively yeah. like to now but what would you say like some of like your early on um some things that like are different now from like early on walking with god maybe to like now and like that relationship and how that's kind of fostered and like grew yeah i think it's maybe more the conversations like yeah. and just like i think we've talked about it but more just like reflecting and kind of like traumas and like kind of just understanding and like breaking it down a little bit more with him and yeah. just talking to him about it I feel like maybe earlier on I kind of just was more quiet with it and just even like an FCA I would just kind of not be as engaged but then yeah. I just feel like as I learned more and got to like pack down some of these or unpack some of the things that I struggle with it's like really helped me grow as a person mm -hmm. and I feel like that's maybe more of the difference is just maybe the more conversations with him mm -hmm. I feel like I would never just like be in my shower just talking to him or like <laughs> listening to like worship yeah. or like yeah, yeah. or like when things would get hard like say I was like walking a class maybe my freshman year I just like put I don't know I just wouldn't even be like thinking about God or like any of those conversations but then I'd be like Oh, I just had a long day at school and like the only thing I'd want to do is like talk to God in that moment. And yeah. like I'd say that would like, be like a big difference is yeah. just finding time even when like with our schedule, it's always crazy. But just even finding five minutes to just when I'm walking from class, like right before practice, like I'd be like, oh, talking to him and just mm -hmm. mind my own business with God. And like that would be all I would need just for that little like reset yeah. before practice. And that would just put me in a better like headspace than like just walking freshman year just like messing around maybe with my teammates or I don't know it's just like a <laughs> I could go to him instead of just being like talking crap with my teammate that I'm walking to class with I just put my headphones on and just yeah put some worship on and just kind of be at peace with God versus freshman year I would just be like mm, yeah well I'll do it later but now it's like oh I can fit five minutes in like 
Yeah. I'll, f- I'll figure out a way to fit five minutes in or even just at night or in the morning. I have like a journal now that I just like write a lot in. I feel like I didn't write in a journal before. Yeah. And I would just like read or whatever. But now it's like I write down what I'm feeling, what maybe like verses like like impacting me at that moment and just mm. praying and asking what other people need a prayers for and just kind of trying to grow that community too um, yeah. within Oregon because I've seen how it's impacted a lot of us. I mean, I just saw like a video of Bo Nix. I think I'll have to show you after, but mm. it, the video like made me cry because he's, he's a child of God, but like he just is, that his whole story is just crazy. And mm. I mean, he just lost the, um, he just lost the Pac-12 championship. Probably if he won that, he was going to be a Heisman winner. But he yeah. woke up. Or the, and his his interviews are always awesome. But he's like, at the end of the day, like, the sun the sun will rise the next morning and God's always with me. And, like, he's like, yeah, I'll always have that. And, like, he, it's just, I'll have to show you the video. He's just like, yeah. the I Lord's not. Your story. I didn't, I didn't, yeah. I only watched a little bit of uh, it. Yeah. yeah. But he's like, the Lord's not done with me. Like, he just, yeah. he's just a awesome guy to see too yeah with that but i was gonna say too from this year one of the moments that i felt like was a uh bigger one for you too was you had that moment where you sent out a tweet and mm-hmm. woo, <laughs> social media went on fire there for a second yeah you had a, you had a lot of people you know yay nay all of those other things but i also felt like in that same way because of your foundation you know like with god and like talking with you like as those things were happening you know, if that would happen like your freshman year or oh, if that would, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. or something mess. like that was like, I thought that that was like a very big moment because again, like you're getting a ton of feedback and I would say for specifically for you, like you're not very, um, it's not like you're like, you're always posting on social media or like you're very like out there, like extra, like extroverted in the sense of like in that space. Yeah. No. And like, so again, along with that, right. And again, like we talked about, it's like, you were like, okay, I was just posting a simple tweet and all of a sudden I'm on, you know. Um, Sports, Sports Illustrated, Sports sorry, girl. Yeah, like you were, you were, you were having all these yeah. things and getting all this feedback, and like there was a lot of negative feedback in there too, and there was a lot of loving feedback as mm-hmm. well. But obviously, um, I just saw you navigate, and we kind of like talk through as those things were happening. Um, you know, w- talk me through that. Like, what what was that like for you? And then, like, what do you think th- would have been different comparatively from your, you know, like f- like we talked about, like your freshman year compared to like it yeah. now. Probably freshman year, I would have been, like, freaking out. I'd probably been crying, like, all. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, worrying about everything that everybody else was saying. Because yeah. I feel like that was a big thing. Yeah. I almost I'd, like, that talked to God about. Times. Some of those people were being kind of rude to you. I was. Yeah. Uh, you almost, I, I let it. Yeah. We, we, we let it ride. But, no, for sure. I, like, all, like, I still working on it. But, like, I do care a lot about what people say. And so, yeah. I feel like freshman year, I would have probably just read, like, most of those and just kind of let that like deteriorate me and just like bring me down and like I don't know just kind of like my worth with it but I feel like that was oh that was this past summer yeah so like I had been in a good space I've been like doing just I just had been really in a good space that with God that I was just like why would I let any of these people like let their like value like what they had to say like affect my value because it really like shouldn't what all these people say and I know like yeah you get a bunch of hate too all the time and you're just like bro like (laughs) (laughs) it's all good (laughs) it's all good yeah I don't know I feel like freshman year I probably would have just let it like really eat me up and just yeah I might not have like showed it but like deep down I would have been like pretty upset about it but I mean stuff happens and then it's like now I'm just excited for the opportunity to yeah like brought some cool things opportunities for you like again Sports Illustrated was awesome. Yeah. Like you got to, you know, again, also sit down with uh, your AD and like, was it, or was it the president? Of the yeah. Rob Mullins, our AD. Yeah. yeah. Have so a good you, relationship with him now. Yeah. You guys got to sit down and like some of that and then navigate, obviously, as you navigate through things with God. And it also gives me like perspective as well. Like God's healing all these things, but it's kind of hard to see subjectively. But then when like a big moment like that happens, I'll be like, oh, like I've definitely grown or <laughs> like that. I would have responded very different back before or, and also like PSA for, you know, everybody on social media that is, you know, throwing stones. Um, again, on the same side of that, there is a human on the yeah. other side of all those stones you're throwing. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. And also, um, I'm mean, this, this would be my, my reply all to everybody that rep- responded to the page. All right. God also made me be very quiet during that time. Yeah. Light y'all up. <laughs> but, uh, but also like, you know, with it as well is, you know, again, um, yeah, like at the, at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, like, 
um, you, I, I think by far, if there's someone that like represents Oregon, <laughs> I think it's you very highly. And then also on that same note of that, like not only that, but like even too from your coaching staff, also too from um, uh, all the situations that you're put in, not, not only from the school, um, from those things where they ask you to do certain things where like, again, talking to your teammates and uh, representing the, or, uh, the university and all those other things uh, that at that time people were like were misrepresenting like what one, what you were saying, trying to also hear out like your heart of like things that were important to you and also your love for the pack, like, you know, in the, in the first place. Yeah. Right. Which is where it was like, some of that was coming from. And then also your love for your family. Right. And your love mm -hmm. and your, and your love for the game itself. So I think that that was like also, you know, a big thing as well was like that moment for me. And I hope, like I said, I, that's what was like a reflection for me in that way is like, I saw how much you grew just from like emotionally and how you dealt with, um, that spiritually like as well comparatively i'm like man like i was like man her freshman year like that probably would have gone very yeah, it very probably different could have easily like responded back to a lot of people too for sure out of just like protection but yeah like god god still was protecting me i didn't need to protect myself in that situation yeah and like i don't know i probably could have done some more immature decisions with how i handled it but yeah because there's a lot of other athletes because you weren't obviously you weren't the only one wasn't, there was a lot of athletes that were like especially ones that had graduated already they have no ties and they're just yeah. like Ooh, and everybody's, just, <laughs> everybody's just popping off yeah. um responding to people and and some of those other things too and um you know i i think all the time like you said the same thing is like yo i'm still working on it uh too as well because you know at the end of the day at the end of the day i think along with that is um it's, you know, important that on the same way, like how we treat others, how we respond and all those things. And again, it's, it's not that, um, you know, we can't respond or we can't do other things, but like how we do and the wisdom of when and where, and like, mm -hmm. also like, you know, like I always think of that, that same saying of, you know, boats don't, you know, sink because of the water around them, but the water that they let inside them. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing too, as well. It's like in that scenario where you get, you are on a stage and, and you are, because you are an Oregon athlete in those same ways. It's like an another positive that came out of that. You got verified. Oh, <laughs> <for everything>. <laughs> <laughs> got verified almost <laughs> everywhere on social media after that. So that was cool. Um, but I think that on the, with that as like the, the bigger blessing, um, one thing our, our pastor said this last weekend is he was talking about, uh, material blessings compared to spiritual blessings. And, um, everybody wants these material blessings, right? The house, the car, the girlfriend, the, you know, husband, the whatever, right? The kids, mm -hmm. all these, all these things of like material or uh, certain environments or, or things that they would want in their life. And he was talking about how, you know, spiritual blessings are what bring, um, spiritual blessings are what bring value to our material blessings. Mm -hmm. And like, so, you know, for example, there's people that have millions of dollars that have all the things that we want, but like don't feel fulfilled. I want to make sure too, I didn't scramble exactly what he said. I take, I take my notes. Um, I think that was kind of like the rich in gratitude kind of member. Yep. Mm -hmm. Was it that time or was this, are you talking about? No, no, this, this was just another... this past, oh, past okay. weekend. Yeah. He, he, he'd just be dropping nuggets. Yeah. Pastor Judd is a monster. Just... Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, every spiritual blessing brings meaning to the material blessing. Right. And so like, I think about like that as well as like, for example, like if you don't have gratitude, mm -hmm. right, I can just give you millions and millions of dollars and you get all these other things. And it's like, you still, it doesn't mean your mental health is great. It doesn't mean your spiritual health is great. Like also mm -hmm. too, you could have, you know, gluttony in your heart, not in the sense of like, I need more, like I need more love. I need more people in my life. I need more friends. I need, you know, again, I need always needing more, yeah. um, rather than like, if you have a spiritual blessing, it's like, I could have very little and still have so much gratitude yeah. for it. Right. And again, you could tie that back in the job as well. It's like, as he lost everything, you know, again, also focusing on like what God still gave you. I thought about this this morning was I had to flip flop this in my head. I, I texted you about this too. I was very frustrated about this. I couldn't find, and I still can't find this dang hoodie. All right. <laughs> my, my hoodie, I wanted one of this hoodie and I know this sounds silly, but I, 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 I thought this was, I realized that I was having a, a spiritual attack that was happening this moment. Cause it's, it's these small things, right? Couldn't find my hoodie. And then my, one of my favorite shirts that I just bought got <laughs> torn up by my washer, like tore it all the way through the side. Right. So it sounds silly. It's like, Oh, what, how could that be tied in? Well, you know what that did? It started, it started snowballing in my head. I, I, I literally, when I saw my shirt torn, it changed my mood. Like I was like, 
started getting upset and then I started slipping into a place of like scarcity right like of like I just bought that shirt and like you know like and like my clothes like and it's it's it starts with like a little clothing like that and then like it, I felt it start to like snowball and change my mood mm. and then me realizing too of being like Joey isn't it like the Holy Spirit like intervening and going like isn't it so interesting like on the same side of that like Taylor knows for sure on this how much clothes I have right and it's like I like I could just go put another outfit on. I can go put another pair of sweats on. I can go put another jacket on. I could go do whatever. Mm -hmm. And me realizing the abundance and all the ways that God has provided and stepped into my life mm -hmm. and all the things that like he works and how he works and like what that, what that looks like throughout my, throughout everything, like how he shows up. Like literally there's so many times, even to this day, my truck is now probably, I don't know, almost seven years old. I've had it for like five years, four or five years. Mm -hmm. And there's so many moments that I still to this day will get in my truck and I'll be like, God, I'm so grateful. Mm -hmm. And it's like, because I spent so much of my life literally walking or on a bike. Mm -hmm. Like my, my dad would have loved to drive around in the truck that I get to drive around in every mm -hmm. single day. And so sometimes again, I think along with that, like somebody else might get in my truck and be like, man, this thing is, you know, like we have trucks that are two times as yeah. expensive as this, or, you know, way bigger than this or all these other things. And I, I thank God all the time for, again, that spiritual blessing of like gratitude and perspective is of all the ways that he continues like in, as well as to provide me, you know, where I can have, I can actually have value for my material blessings where, you know, I get in the, I, I get in this very, um, grounded place where I'm like, I was saying this on my Bible study the other day was, it was like, God, like, I don't need anything else from you. Like mm -hmm. you've done everything for me. Mm -hmm. Like you've given me everything. Like, again, like I was cleaning toilets and like for a facility. Now I have my own facility. Like God, you've given me the abundance of friends that I have and the relationships that I have and like the people that you've put around in my life and, and what I get to do every day and the way that like people love me every day and support me and all these other things. And people start to associate that when they hear a lot of times when I remember being on the other side and hearing somebody talk about all those other things and be like, Oh, that's because God's doing such great things in your life. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like it doesn't mean that everything's so gravy in yeah. my life. It doesn't mean that I don't have pitfalls. It doesn't mean that like everything is going right for me. Mm -hmm. It's the perspective of being like the only reason I can be upset about one of my shirts being torn is because I don't wake up every day and my, I don't wake up every day and, and my shirts be torn from a, a washer. First off, I have a washer. I can clean my clothes in yeah. second off on top of that too. Like, again, like when one hoodie goes missing, <clears throat> it's, I just realized, cause me and Taylor were just talking about this. I was going through my photos, trying to find the last time I wore this hoodie and I couldn't find a photo. Or video yeah, so anytime <laughs> because it's been missing for so long that I haven't even noticed it because I have an abundance of other clothes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so for me to realize, you know, like kingdom perspective on that, right. is like mm -hmm. when something goes wrong in my life for me to realize the only reason that this is a big deal to me is because it doesn't happen every day. Yeah. God blesses me so much every day that when there's a misstep or something doesn't like, it's like, it's like, for example, if your coffee, like machine breaks today, mm -hmm. you would be like, I noticed because every other day it works. Yeah. Right. Like mm -hmm. when someone in your family gets sick, right. You notice because every day they're healthy. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if you can use those moments of these setbacks or these losses or burdens or whatever, and you can have it change your perspective to f focus you back on wow, the only reason I'm noticing this because I've taken for granted, right? Or I haven't even had gratitude for all the days that my life doesn't look like this and it doesn't feel this way. And, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm hurting right now because like, for example, like even in a relationship, let's say, you know, again, like one of your like lovers or just your friend, mm -hmm. right? When they walk out of your life, the only reason it hurts so bad is because at one point it was so great. Yeah. Right. Like if, if, I got to experience that. I got to have that relationship. I got to do these other things. So it hurts right now because mm -hmm. of how amazing like it was at, you know, those points or that all, all that love or all that gratitude or all those things that like I got to experience at mm -hmm. one point. Right. And so I, I think that that's also been a big thing for me is like letting it trigger the positive emotions for me, like from that suffering or from those other things. And so I was mm -hmm. like, you know, for example, if you were like, if you're getting, and I, I see this all the time on social media, like 
like celebrities or like players or things like that that I train where it's like they receive hate every day. Yeah. They get yeah. thousands of comments, mm-hmm. right? I was looking on Mark Wahlberg's post the other day. He posted something like he was like on Sunday, you know, stay prayed up. Like that's his thing, right? Like stay prayed up and he walks away from a church or whatever. People on there are hammering him for all these things like Mark Wahlberg, mm-hmm. right? First off, talking about God in the first place, like all these other things, right? Yeah. And they're just like, lighten every everybody's lighting him up in his in his comments Mm -hmm. and i'm like and i've been on that i've been tagged on post or been on post with like you know these celebrity like mlb players stuff like that and like that's the thing is like they receive so much hate every single day Mm -hmm. that like if i got all that on one of my posts it would be a big deal to me it's like why is it not a big deal to them is because like every single day like they get so much hate that it becomes like white noise for them right Mm -hmm. but it's like you flip flop that the opposite way Mm -hmm. where it's like, I get so much love that when someone responds the other way or says something else or does whatever, like I notice. And so I think it's just like a different perspective as well as like before when something would go bad, I'd be like, why me God? (laughs) Why is this happening? Oh, Oh, things right. Where now it just kind of triggers me at being like, I immediately go into gratitude God and be like, you know, for example, like I can get into a car accident and then you could, you could be like, man, God, like, you know how many days I have not gotten a car accident? Mm -hmm. Like, God, I got a speeding ticket today. God, you know how many days I've sped and not gotten a ticket? Like, thank you for your protection, Mm -hmm. for your provision, for, you know, all these things. Or even, too, that I have money to even pay this ticket or, you know, or whatever, right? And Mm -hmm. I I think that that's been a big thing for me, too, as well, is, like, instead of seeing struggle as, like, a, it almost brings me awareness of, like, how often this doesn't happen. That's why I'm noticing it. Oh, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. But... Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, no, uh, I think I'm the same thing. Thank you for coming on page. Yeah, of course. Anytime. She's like like, podcast. Um, (laughs) yeah, but, uh, I'm going to pray us out and then, you know, let's, I don't know if, I don't know if we did that. We started doing that a little while back ago, huh? Yeah. I don't know if she, I wasn't, I don't don't think. Yeah. When Atlanta was here. Yeah. So I'll pray us out. Okay. Okay. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, just for this time that we get to spend together, God. And I just, um, pray that you bring us awareness, um, let's not take for granted, you know, a single day of the relationships or the people that we have in our life, God, and let us not uh, feel entitled to another day, another hour, um, another second of having them in our life, God, and just be, uh, be where our feet are. Um, and, and God, just humble our hearts and, um, help us trust you and have faith, um, and help us and break us free of all the areas, God, that we just have problems trusting you or pride or something that is resisting us from landing into your plan and we just ask that you break us free from these things god so that we can build a closer and deeper relationship with you and we pray all these things in jesus mighty name amen amen Amen. until next time farm system out